Good morning and welcome to today's math lesson on 8.7a, volume of cylinders. Our do now reads the dimensions of a rectangular piece of paper are 8.5 inches and 11 inches. Veronica folded the piece of paper along its diagonal. Which measurement is closest to the length of the diagonal in inches? So if we drew out the piece of paper, and we said that this was the side that was 11 inches and then this is the side right here that was 8.5 and we drew a diagonal line we can see that we have a right triangle so this height of the right triangle is going to be our a this base of the right triangle is going to be our b and what we're trying to find is our c so we can use the pythagorean theorem to solve this problem so we have the equation a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Our a is 11, so we have 11 squared, plus our b is 8.5, so we have 8.5 squared is equal to c squared. So all we did was plug in the values for A and B into this Pythagorean theorem equation. 11 squared, 11 times 11 is 121. Then we have to do 8.5 squared, so we have 8.5 times 8.5, which is 72.25. And then we have to add together 121 plus 72.25 which gives us 193.25 is equal to C squared. And so we just want to find out what C is. So to do that, we're going to have to find the square root of 193.25. When we round it to two decimal places, our answer is about 13.90. And that correlates or corresponds to answer choice D. Again, today's TIC is 8.7a. Our lesson target is that scholars will solve problems involving the volume of cylinders, and our DOL is given four problems. Scholars will solve problems involving the volume of cylinders with 100% accuracy. So this can right here, this tin can, is in the shape of a cylinder. And so, as you can see, the base of the cylinder is a circle. And so there's usually two bases. So we see the top circle, but then we also have to imagine that there's also the circle, the bottom circle. So to find the volume or how much like water, how many beans we can fit into this like tin can, we're gonna first have to find the area of the base. So to find the area, we're going to need to know our radius because the area of a circle formula is area is equal to pi, which is, we're just going to use the number 3.14, radius square. Sometimes we're given the diameter. So what we have to remember is that the diameter is twice as much as the radius. So the diameter is two times the radius. And then lastly, to find the volume, we have the area of a circle, which is pi radius square times the height of the can. So that's our last variable. For this first I do problem, it reads the Longhorn Band at the University of Texas at Austin has one of the world's largest bass drums known as Big Bertha. So Big Bertha is pictured here. Big Bertha has a volume of eight feet and, four, and is 4.5 feet deep, which is just the height. Find the volume of the drum to the nearest tenth. So not only do we have to find the volume, but we also have to round it to the nearest tenth. And we have to use 3.14 for pi. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is write out my volume equation for cylinders, which is pi radius square times height. Pi radius square is basically the area of the circle or the base, and then height is, in this case, the depth of 
the bass drum. Then we can figure out what the radius is. Usually we would be able to plug in what the radius is if the problem gave us the radius, but in this case, they gave us the diameter. So if we know that our diameter is eight feet and our diameter is twice as long or twice as big as our radius. That means our radius has to be half of that. So half of eight is four. So now that we have what our radius is, we can plug it into our volume of cylinders equation. So we have V is equal to, and instead of using pi, we're using 3.14. So we have 3.14 times the radius, which is four, squared times the height, which in this case is 4.5. When we multiply 3.14 times 4 squared, which ends up being 16 times 4.5, and we round it to two decimal places, we get 226.08 feet cubed. So the important thing to remember about finding volume is that your unit of measurement, in this case it was feet, is going to be cubed or raised to the power of three. Because if we think about it, our radius was four feet, so we have four feet times four feet again, which is 16 feet squared, and then we have to multiply that by our height, which was 4.5 feet. So in that case, there was like three feet that we had to multiply together. So we had to multiply together four feet times four feet times 4.5 feet, and that's what gives us the feet cubed, or feet to the power of three. This I do problem reads a cylindrical silo that stores grain has a volume of approximately 8,038.4 feet cubed and is 40 feet tall. Find the radius of the silo to the nearest tenth. We have to use 3.14 for pi. So in this case, we're working backwards because instead of trying to find the volume, we're given the volume and we have to find the radius. So we're gonna start off by writing that same volume formula for cylinders, which is pi radius square times height. Then we're gonna plug in the numbers that we know in this case. So we know that the volume is 8,038 0.4, and we know that we have to use 3.14 for pi, and then we don't know what the radius is, so we're going to keep r squared. We know that the height is 40. So next, we're going to multiply the numbers that we do know. So again, I'm going to write the 8,038.4. And I'm actually going to switch to a different color because I see that the purple against this like blue background is kind of hard to see. So we multiply together 3.14 times 40, and that gives us 125.6. R squared, and we want to get this 125.6 to the other side because eventually we just want to isolate the R. We want to get the R alone. So we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 125.6. So when we divide 8,000, 38.4 divided by 125.6, we get 63.99, just about, is equal to r squared. Because a number divided by itself is always 1, so we can cross that out. And to just get r alone, we're going to have to square root both sides of the equation. So the square root of 63.99, when rounded to two decimal places, is 
but from the problem, it says we have to round to the nearest tenth. So we're rounding to one decimal place. So just as a review on rounding, the number in the tenths place is this eight, or sorry, is this nine, and the number to the right of it is a nine. Five or more, we let that nine soar, the nine becomes a zero, and then we add one to the seven. So our radius rounded to the nearest tenth is actually going to be eight. And then our unit in this problem is feet, so our radius is eight feet. So we have some we do problems as well as some you do problems. And then finally, it's going to be your turn to show me what you know on the Google Forms DOL. Thank you so much for following along in today's math lesson and see you in tomorrow's math video.